Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Black Myth Wukong Let's Play. So, believe it or not, I made this jump in my first try after doing it off recording. Yet we couldn't do it in three tries when I was recording. Ah, it's a material to be soaked in our alcohol. Hu she li. So she li, as we mentioned, is the remains of a renowned Buddhist monk after they die and they burn their bodies. And you get to have whatever remains. Could be a piece of teeth, it could be a piece of bone. Whatever doesn't get burned away uh, becomes a she li. And uh, for those who are devout believers, they would pray to it as a holy relic. In this case, because I guess we have a temple to the tiger, and this area is right after that, we get a piece of the tiger's body after it's burnt, which doesn't really fit the story, but that's essentially what this is. And this improves our quit rate after drinking. So if we soak this into the whatever liquor we decide to use, we drink it, increase our quit rate. I'm going to keep what we have. I think it's not bad. This is the new higher tier. Yeah, these are weapon materials, and we only have two of these. We need four to get our dragon staff. Not in a rush to pick that up. We're gonna just quickly slide down. And we're gonna teleport back to open the other gate that requires both piece from the vanguards. But before we do that, we left off with one codex that we did not read, which is the Headless Monk. San Xian, San Xian, <laughs> the three-string lute instrument that he's playing. Ding uh, Feng the village, not the estate, the estate that stops the wind. It's the fancy estate where we went to to fight those Imperial Guard. And they used to be a village, and this is also the place where the Wandering Swordman and his kid got killed and turned into the monster who helps the tiger. And before that all happened, when there were all humans there, a strange thing occurred. And it occurred around the time that the sandstorm starts in the Yellow Wind Mountain. Surprised they would refer the mountain with this name before the strange wind starts, but obviously it should probably get its name after having the wind. Regardless, on that day, when the kids of the village were playing near the entrance of the village, they start to hear the sound of a three-string lute coming out of the air. They follow the sound and look that direction, and they see a figure of a body, and it's leaning against a giant rock, singing away. The song speaks of Xue Hua Feng Sha Hua Yu. This is two, well, one line, uh, two little phrases that he sung to us at the beginning of the stage. Not the very beginning. After he cleaned our arrows and went ahead, he started his second verse, which started with this. And it means the wind, uh, uh, like, I guess the, the blood becomes the wind, the sand becomes the rain. Essentially, the wind's going to come and blow and, and causes blood or violence, and the sand will be blowing through the air like raindrops, basically. Now, the kids never heard of this song, so they rush towards this figure that's playing this lute. But when they get close, they can see that standing behind this rock, the man who's singing is headless. And this, of course, freaks out all the kid. And they run back, run away from him. But there is one kid who was called Cheng Da. And this kid tripped on his way running back. As he laid on the ground, seeing that his friends have ran farther and farther away, uh, he's scared and in pain from tripping and falling. So he starts to cry. The headless man hears this crying sound and stops his rap, or his song. And from behind the rock, he, you know, spins around and walks out, and he gently 
flicks the strings on his lute, and an invisible power helps Cheng Da stand up. So basically, like you know, he shot that power at us a couple times, dissolving the arrows, teaching us a new ability. But in this case, he's emitting his power through, I guess, the sound waves, and it gently, you know, helps Cheng Da stand up, and、uh, Cheng Da is not as scared anymore. And he observes and see that on this headless body is a very clean Buddhist robe. So he's wearing a Buddhist robe, and on his neck、uh, he has nian zhu. So these are prayer beads.、Uh, you can wear them on your hand. You can wear them on your neck. They're usually in、uh, multiples of 108, and you're supposed to、uh, hold them in your hand or In the case of your neck, you can put your hand up to it, and you kind of count each bead as you pray. And once you finish one cycle,、uh, you basically went through all the scriptures. Each bead represents something. That's why the multiple 108.、Uh, I'm not a Buddhist myself, so details not so familiar. But you can see this idea also on、uh, Tibetan Buddhism, where they spin the wheel. The metallic wheel. It kind of looks like the playing drum that we have, where you have a little handle, and on top is a sort of a cylinder, a metal cylinder. And what they have is they carve the scriptures onto these cylinders. So when you spin them, it symbolizes you going through the scriptures once. And you have large versions of these for Tibetan Buddhism in particular, where they build these cylinders、uh, against the wall. And you walk by them, and you put your hand on them, and you spin them, much like how you would go through the prayer beads. It basically symbols the same thing. It's basically the、uh, passage of going through each of the scriptures without reading the entire scripture,、uh, but it symbolizes you going through them mentally and spiritually.、Uh, regardless,、uh, so aside from the fact he doesn't have a head, he appears to be the same as every monk that has passed by the village. And this made that kid who fell down, Cheng Da, a little bit less scared. And now the headless monk sees that Cheng Da has not ran away, so he flicks his strings again. And all of a sudden, Cheng Da feels this gentle breeze pass by his leg, and he looks down, and he sees the cuts of when he fell down to the ground. They start to heal, and it doesn't hurt anymore. And in a you know a blink of an eye, even the flesh grew back. So he healed him with just the flick of the strings, and this made him super happy as he start clapping and jumping, and says, "Wow, it's so amazing, so strong." And the monk becomes delighted by this and plays his string again, and this light flicks from his、uh, pants. And his pants become just as good as new. After this, the headless monk starts seeing again. You know, Huang Feng Lin, Ba Bai Li, Cheng Shi Guan Wei Fu Rao Di. So this is the beginning lines that he sang to us when we first enter the stage. You know, the Yellow Wind Ridge, 800 li or 400 kilometers, used to be a rich area outside of Guan. Guan is、uh, gate passes, so essentially the border. Right, China has great walls. On Great Wall, there are gate passes, and these are basically border outposts. When you're Guan Wei or outside of these Guan, that means you left the country.、Uh, it used to be a rich land outside of the boundaries of China because we're way past it in Journey of West, so we're not in the Tang Empire anymore. And just as he finished singing, he casts himself into、uh, the sandstorm and he disappears. Back at the village,、uh, the kids that ran back brought his parents to come seek him because they saw him trip. So Cheng Da's parents are here, and all they see is Cheng Da pointing at the sandstorm, excitedly screaming, "There's a god! There's a god!" And the adult said, "You know, don't say silly things. What god do you know have no head? You definitely saw a ghost." So a couple points we can cover here. Uh, the fact that the developer decided to use this character in this way、uh, is a little bit of spoiler content, but essentially this is not just any Buddhist monk. 
this is a Bodhisattva uh, or Pusa. In particular, this is Lingji Pusa, the Pusa that used to be in charge of the Yellow Wind Sage, the one that uh, Buddha himself gifted two items to capture this, uh, I guess, original sable creature who stole a drink from the Buddha's oil lamp. And the two items were a staff with a dragon uh, that was uh, coiling on it. And he could cast the staff into the air. The dragon comes to life and it grabs the sable by the head. And the other item is a dun or a pill. In this case, this pill is not for consumption, but has the ability more like a pearl. Uh, it's a gem and its ability is to halt the wind because this sable creature, the yellow wind sage, has control of very powerful winds that could even blind Wukong's eyes. And that is a hard thing to do because Wukong was captured by uh, Taishan Lao Jun, or one of the deities of Taoism, and was thrown into his cauldron for uh, alchemy conversion. Uh, Taishan Lao Jun wanted to basically burn Wukong into a dun. Uh, he failed uh, in one of the most strongest magical cauldrons in the world. Uh, for 49 days, Wukong came out harmless. The smoke from the cauldron basically tainted Wukong's eyes, but gifted his eyes the all-seeing power. So Wukong can see through transformations and can see through the truth. Very powerful eyes. And yet, when Wukong was facing against the Yellow Wind Sage in the original journey to the west, uh, the wind blinded him, made him so uncomfortable that he couldn't open them until he got treatment from a ointment gifted to him by uh, Buddhist followers, guardians that kind of follow Tang Sen on this journey. Yeah, for those who read the original novels versus watching the show, in reality, uh, the Buddhist faith uh, representing you know Buddha and everyone that follows him had followers that follow Tang Sen everywhere he went on the journey and they secretly offered protection from time to time when needed so it wasn't just the three disciples oh, and the dragon horse but rather there was a group of deities demigods of the Buddhism faith that was there to make sure that their reincarnated golden cicada can finish his journey and bring back the scriptures and in that case they transform into uh, this village and they treated Wukong's eyes uh, right after the events uh, of the first fight between Wukong and the Yellow Wind Sage. Uh, but in this case, Lingzi lost his head. And we'll see why and how he lost his head. But the story is definitely not from the journey to the West. It's the original story. So there's a lot of reasons that developers did this. Uh, many, uh, or I guess a common theory right now that's very popular it's a reflection of the numerous missing or headless Buddhist statues that are in China uh, due to pillaging and smuggling of artifacts during the period uh, near the end of the Qing Dynasty all the way to uh, the Republic of China. Very chaotic time for China during uh, about that century, often referred to century of humiliation. But we're getting into a lot of politics, but essentially we had a lot of foreign adventurers, treasure hunters, smugglers, uh, native ones as well, because Chinese artifact fetch a really good price overseas. And during that really lawless period where China didn't really have a strong central government, a lot of warlords, a lot of these treasures from as old as the North South Dynasty, so fourth century, uh, they were trying to ship these artifacts out. And for a lot of stone Buddha statues, the entire statue is too heavy and too difficult to move. So the most representative part would be the head. So they basically broke these statues and took the head and shipped them out and sold them. Or were just taken by actual foreign smugglers. There were quite a few British uh, adventurers who went to China to get artifacts. Uh, you see this all over the world, and the fact the British Museum gets this slack all the time, you know, having treasures from Egypt, from Greece, from China, uh, all sorts of places from their colonial past. And there's a lot of recent movement to try to get some of these um, lost treasures back to China and restored back onto these heads. Uh, and I think this is uh, one of the meanings behind why they did this, why they made him headless.
Now we need to go take care of some uh, other matters here in game. We still have a younger tiger brother to do and an entire hidden area to do. And we have to first go back and open the door that was locked to us before. So we're also still missing the mana increase for this stage because we got the health cap and the stamina cap. That door. That door still remain locked to us. Let's open it. Now, as silly as us getting blocked by stone doors, this was like super common in Journey to the West. Every time there is a, a layer of a demon or a monster and Wukong is trying to fight them and they fight Wukong to a draw or they can't, you know, handle Wukong in a fight, they become a gust of wind and run back to their lair and they will shut the door and somehow Wukong in all his power can't break these doors. Now this is going to be interesting. Slightly hidden staircase. Oh, this is the door that we couldn't open from the other side. We're finally connecting the stage. This is where we fought the first sun. Yeah, the first prince of the sand. And the hidden room beneath us, which is what that little icon is. I'm still a little confused why the centipedes are here. But maybe we'll find out later. That's why we can't open it from that side, because this is locked, and if we could just open it, then we just bypass that door. I don't even think this charge attack is going to work that well. The best case scenario, we do like half damage to his shield. I'd rather just want to get the, the dodge ready. We got the parry off this time. Not bad. Okay, I'm a little short on stamina. Let's wait a little bit. Wait, what else is joining the fight? Have we fought one of these things before, or is this the missing codex? I think it might be something we fought already. Might be the raccoon dog. But raccoon dog's too... Two blades, I think. Oh, it is new. Yo. Okay. It's like a ferret. After the winds returned to the Yellow Wind Ridge, the monsters' lives got worse. The Tiger Vanguard and the Sand King, the rat, are fighting each other all the time. And this made it super difficult for Huang. I think this I, Weasel might be the better translation. I think that's what they are. Because they are related by blood a little bit to both sides. Okay, so I guess they're saying Weasels are like a little bit like cats and a little bit like rats. And because they're caught in the middle, Neither side likes them, right? It's kind of like uh, if your parents are from two different races, you are kind of like mixed and you can't really fit in with either side. Uh, they're called Shilong, so they're like uh, t imperial attendants of sorts. Like a government, all, all these titles are government official titles because a lot of them are changed from the previous the kingdom here becoming rats. Uh, the one day. When, I guess I'm going to call him a weasel, is standing next to the battlefield, thinking about, you know, all the bullying, all the unfair treatment he's been suffering through the years. Suddenly, the thought of suicide surfaced in his head, and he found a, you know, crooked, dried-up tree, untied his belt, 
get ready the stacking stones. You got to stand up somewhere higher. You don't hang yourself and you kick those stone away. He put his belt, he looped it around the tree, put it around his neck, kicked with his two legs, and then suddenly had regret. The pain uh, and the dizziness made him kind of struggle like crazy on the belt, you know, kicking and everything. But no matter how hard he tried, it was too late. He can't free himself as he was basically hanging himself. But just at this moment, someone held his feet. So basically kept him from choking himself. And there was a glittering or a shiny thigh, a blade, a curved blade that cut by his neck. And oh, not, not on his neck, but by his neck. And it cut the belt clean off. Afterward, you know, he crashed down to the ground and sat there. Catching his breath, he looked to see who saved him. And it was a very skinny, well, the woman just means like old lady, like old grandma. And she's carrying this herbal bath, uh, basket. So she has like a maybe a bamboo basket behind her where she's collecting herbs for medicine purposes. And, it's, and she says to him, if you, like, because he's struggling so much, you know, if you're not, if you have regrets of dying, then you should just live, you know, live well. And, oh, she's human. So as she says this, you know, she doesn't even, she's not even bothered by the fact that he's a monster and she just, you know, kind of drags her feet and leaves because she's old. She, she's having struggles walking. So he quickly transformed himself back to his true form of just being a weasel and follows this old grandma back to her house. It's one of the, you know, rotten buildings, you know, still left by the, the area there. It's the building's not in great shape. Uh, the main hall is super empty, not a lot of furnitures. In the kitchen, there's not a lot of rice. There's no rice left, and uh, she has no food. And it turns out she lost her husband and then lost her son. And ever since, she goes to the mountains, dig out herbs, and trade it for some money to survive. After he learned of this, he started to sympathize with her and feels like she, her life is tough just like his. So he felt the need to help her out for a bit. So he used his transform, transformation abilities and transformed himself into a refugee, an old man, a refugee from another land. And he comes to the old lady and says, you know, he's a refugee, doesn't know anyone here, has no one to really rely on. And was wondering if he can um, rent out a room or just you know borrow a room and stay here for a little bit. And she agrees, I guess. And during the day, he would go into the Yellow Wind Ridge to hunt. And in the night, he would ask the small stone creatures to come secretly and repair the house. And him as the old man and the old grandma uh, just you know, live together. Dahua means not married, but living like a couple. And the days become a lot better. You know, everyone is uh, improving their life. And this made other villagers here uh, kind of jealous that they, you know, that the old grandma living in the poorhouse is suddenly, you know, getting repairs. This old man who's hunting for her and just their days are getting better. And this made the others jealous. Then one day, Two villagers uh, snuck behind this weasel when he's transformed as an old guy, and they followed him. And all they really wanted to do was spy on him and see how he hunted, because he hunted so successfully all the time, they wanted to, I guess, learn from him or maybe discover his secret. But what they actually saw was that once he was in the ridge, he transformed back to his original form. And it's a... Uh, a weasel monster wearing clothes and he has a curved blade uh, he looks like you know half monster half human because humanoid form like in the drawing but these villagers just sees him in this form and sees the the curved blade and feels like that blades on their neck not that 
he's actually putting the blade on their neck, but they just feel the danger. They feel like, oh my god, we have a monster in the village who's transformed. You know, we don't know this. This is so scary. He's carrying such a good weapon. So they rush back to the village and tell the entire village of this, this development. So everyone pulled some money together and invited a Taoist uh, monk to come and kill him. Wow. And successfully killed him. Quite the monk. After this weasel monster died, not long later, uh, not long after, the grandma uh, became very sick and then died soon after. Everyone started to say uh, that house is cursed. So after dividing up whatever is valuable in the house, you know, whatever leather good from the hunts or whatever herbs from her gathering, they split all the wealth and set the whole house to fire because they said it's cursed and they burned it all down. Ah, <sighs> well, sad end, but at least they got to live well before they got killed, essentially. And uh, sometimes people just can't see others get better, especially if they're all in bad environment. You know, if you're in a terrible neighborhood growing up, I'm sure you can relate. You know, when one gets well. They expect you to help the others, and when you're when that's not the case, they they get jealous. We finished the collection of all the the little monsters here. Three more elites and two more bosses. Two more characters as well. Hmm. I'm trying to think who might these be. I know for a fact we're fighting the younger brother of the tiger. We're going to be fighting their dad once we go to the special stage where we go back in time. And then we're probably also fighting... I hear footsteps. Is that just mine? No. There's also this... Another weasel coming up. Oh, he backs up. Sneaky. Yeah, kind of like a cat, right? But also kind of like a rat. There's also Fu Ban, who is the giant insect, which I'm guessing it's been referred so many times we're probably going to be fighting it. That's probably a big boss. And then the Yellow Wind Sage. What is that? We don't have any small monsters left, so that's a big monster, or at least a elite. Definitely a elite, not a big boss. The stage is too... like his fighting area is too small for him to be a, a big boss. Does he use magic? Because he has a staff? By Mu Jinren! The 100 eyed Jinren, I guess, could be a Dapti Taoist practitioner. By Mu, the 100 eye is a reference to a different demon from the journey to the west that does not appear in the Yellow Wind Ridge. So, who is he? And also, ooh, does he just threw blood at us? Yeah, those are eyeballs on his back. But the monster from the journey to the west has eyeballs, or oh, we parry, has eyeballs on his, like, body. I, I guess that's his body? There's another monster over there, I don't want to disturb that, so I'm trying to pull him this way. He doesn't use spells, that mace of his is just the mace. But there are pools of blood? Poison. Okay. I see. We're poison. It's fine. He doesn't have health left. Let's read his story. Does he explode? Uh, no. He gives us a... Nice little spirit to use. And we get ourselves a gourd upgrade material here too. Two of these on this stage. Not bad. Alright, before we go fight that thing. Oh, we also didn't switch this. So his ability is transformed to him. Stand on our staff. And then the eyes on our back shoots out light. And wherever... Oh, no, no, the staff. The staff shoots out light. The staff has eyes on it? 
There's a poison toad on the top of the staff, I guess. I thought it was a mace. And it will shoot out a red light, and wherever the red light covers, we get attack bonus. After a certain amount of time, the staff goes away. The passive is increase our mana, uh, max mana. Not bad. I guess it's a just a support ability, right? We put the staff somewhere on the ground, and within a certain area around the staff, we get increased attack. Okay. I'm going to switch to him, because I want to use this against the tiger and see if he has any dialogue. And we upgraded it to the same quality as the big head. It's a forward slash. We checked out his ability as well. Bai Mu Zhen Ren. Zhen Ren adaptees, or I mean, on its path towards being a mortal, in a sense. It's a Taoist practitioner. Guai Ren Bei Sheng Nang. So a tumor growing on the back of a weirdo, or a, weird, a strange person. Yi Zhang Xue Ling Zhang. Yi Gan Xue Ling Zhang. A staff of of blood. So there's definitely some blood magic on the staff. Dian Dian Hai Tiao Tiao jumps around like a crazy person. Bai Mu To Hong Guang. From the hundred eyes, red light comes out. Anyways, Huang Hua Guan. Yeah, this is the place where we have Bai Mu Jun. Or I don't, he's called Bai Mu Mo Jun, I think, in the, or like a, like a demon. It's a much stronger term. Yeah, we, we have that right here, okay. So Huang Hua Guan is the location. Guan is a, a Taoist temple. Huang Hua, yellow flower. Um, and uh, there was a strange person that came to Huang Hua Guan. He says he learned from Ling Tai Shan. Ling Tai Cun Shan. Wait, wait. This person studied in the same place that Wukong studied in? Ling Tai Feng Cun Shan is where Pu Ti Zu Shi was at and where Wukong went to learn all his skills. Wukong was the last student, so every other student would be his senior disciple. So this is like a senpai, in a sense. So he claims he studied there. And he's asking the Mo Jun, the demon, the, the Hundred Eye Demon, the one that's from the novel, to give him that thing. Doesn't say what it is, just says that thing, and immediately surrender, then he will show him mercy and let him live. So he's he, he's quite strong. He's threatening the Bai Mu Mo Jun. Bai Mu Mo Jun controls a lot of different bug creatures, bug demons. I mean, this is also the part of the story where you have the spider cave. So I'm thinking we're going to eventually get there. This might lead to a different story or like a continuation of the story in a different chapter because I know the spiders are part of the game. But he's sending out his, like, bug general to go fight this weirdo who approached him. And he did. Okay, so he defeated. So basically, this guy is talking all tough against the demon. And he failed and got captured. And got thrown into the cave and got put into a cocoon of a bug to be nursed inside the cocoon. Huh. Huh. In a few days later, a, a minor monster, a small subordinate, comes to report that the cocoon that this guy was put in has been broken, and the person has ran away. The demon hears this and just snickers, so basically he laughs, gives out a gives out a laugh, and after so the person after he broke out of the cocoon and escaped, he discovered that on his back a tumor started to grow, and on this tumor were many eyes. Very scary sight, uh, but he ignored it, continuing to travel the land and you know cultivate and practice. I guess he's he's going the Taoist line basically, which makes sense. Pu Ti Zhu teaches both, and one day he passes by a abandoned mountain. And in this mountain, there are a lot of bandits, and which is causing the villages beneath the mountain to live in you know terrible life, getting robbed all the time. So he decides to live here for a while and helps them uh, get favorable winds, favorable rain, and cleans out the mountain, help them plant you know, new trees, basically helping out the people there. After, his, after going through his management 
and many years of favorable weather, a lot more refugees came here to settle down. And the population of these villages grew quite well. Huh. But the bandit problem is still there. And when they saw that these trees and plants are growing back on these abandoned barren mountain, all they did was cut down these trees. And when they saw that there were more people in these villages down below, all they did is, you know, have more robberies. So at that point, this strange guy with a tumor on his back now transformed himself into a Buddhist who appeared to be, you know, highly enlightened. And then he walked into the den of these thieves and bandits and started to preach Buddhist chants. And it goes on every single day until finally these chants converted those bandits into abandoning their evil ways and become benevolent civilians and move themselves down the mountains to live in you know harmony with the rest of the villagers. So I guess he learned both Buddhism and Taoism from Puti. He is our senior disciple then, right? That's this confirms he learned from Puti, the fact that he's good at both. Many years passed, then one day this strange uh, man uh, walked into the middle of the village brought out a staff and just stood there. Now he not the middle of it, he just entered the village with a staff and he stood at the village entrance. And from the staff, red light glowed out. And anyone who got shined on by the red light, uh, they feel like they got possessed and they start to fight, bite, kill, anything else that moved basically so they started to kill each other this staff if the light hits you it makes you basically lose your mind and in moments all these villages you know down the mountain uh, living next to the mountain basically had blood flowing like rivers because everyone is killing is as though hell has appeared on earth and at this time the tumor on his back uh, so many eyes, countless eyes, opened up and started to absorb these blood. Right, so basically, he killed off all these villagers so that he can absorb their life spirit, essentially, from the blood. And absorbed into these this tumor that he had. And not long after, his tumor got much bigger. To the point where they can't absorb any more energy. And this is when all the eyes shut. And by the time the weird person woke up, I guess he was possessed too. He pulled out the staff and went to look for the next barren mountain. Okay. Okay, so logically speaking, he's a good person originally. Right, he was Wukong's senior disciple, taught by the same teacher Wukong taught and was taught by, and wanted to do good by demanding the demon of the hundred eyes to give him something and surrender. But unfortunately he wasn't able to beat the hundred eye demon and was captured and given this bug like development, I guess some sort of this is also like eugenics. It's like breeding, right? The hundred, the hundred eye demons breeding part of him into his back in this form of tumor, with the eye that's, I guess, once in a while wakes up and controls him. So he's trying to do good, for like actual good purpose. But the tumor wakes up once in a while, once he has you know grown the local population, and it just basically like harvest them so that it can get stronger and then it shuts his eye to absorb to finish you know kind of digest all this energy they got and then he moves on to try to go do something good and then it wakes up again we'll see when we do get to Huang Hua Guan we'll see if the story there explain what happened here
Oh, come on. We just fought something. We need to drink. We're still poisoned from the earlier fight. Uh, not, not anymore, but we were. Except for it was like a blood poison, so it was glowing red. How did we miss that? We had him locked. Well, we're kind of out of stamina. We'll wait. I guess those are spores. Right, he's a mushroom. Alright, we got ourselves another shrine. And I also think we are going to be fast approaching the area where we can use the little kid's drum for the second time. But I guess we activate the shrine first. Ooh, another weasel. Yeah, they back up first. So hold the charge a little bit longer. I think as someone pointed out, these wills that you can absorb, as well as the spirits from movesets you can absorb, they also refill your gourd. Let's see if that's true. Oh yes, it is. So use it to heal before you pick it up so that you can get a full gourd afterwards. Ah, this gate. This is the gate leading to the tornado. When we walk back from the tornado, we bump into a gate that we couldn't open from the other side. Alright, nothing new to craft here, but do they sell the more expensive metal resource? No. Wait, they sell these. We can get permanent stats with these. Yeah, definitely buy that. We should also take a t take a trip back to uh, the soil deity who is now known as, you know, the, the man stuck in the stones and buy the rest of his stuff. Because now we're slightly richer and we can afford some of them. We can make the basic duns here, but the advanced ones that increase the stat permanently, we have to go to the Zodiac Dog. So I don't want to open this and go fight the boss. Let's see what else is around here. Is it me or that looks like flowing sand? Ye oh, I don't want it. Okay, I'm jumping really hard to go back. So it's a one-way trip down that. I, I don't want to go there yet because there's another path back here. Oh, this is one of those, like, um... I want to say even Jin Dynasty pagodas. Can we go in? No. But well, there's a path this way. Just double checking there. That's a weasel. Almost didn't see him. Another weasel. It's in the house. Can't really. I see him. He popped out on the left. There we go, our little boy. Little monkey, I'm over here. Shake the drum. Well, I'm trying to find out. Oh, not yet, but.
he wakes up all the zombies. Dad says when the sandstorms stop, his illness will heal. You don't look like you're from here. Don't, don't frown. This area is really fun. There's an old man hiding in the rock. There's a pig who steals liquor from the village. And there's there's a something I'm not telling you in the well. Uh, the, the tiger. Ooh! Another Jensen creature. The man in the stone is the soil deity who became the man stuck in the rock. And... The pig is the Zodiac pig who needed a sobering stone from us. And the one that he's not telling us is uh, the tiger. Yeah, this is why we couldn't find the second spot in all the areas we were searching because the second spot is all the way over here. And we need to unlock a few doors to get here. Alright, nothing to climb on this side. I think we are good here. Got the chest. Got the trigger. And now for the last place to play the drum is back at the village ne next to the well that the kid is mentioning. Oh, we've been here before. This is the Door. Wait, we could just turn right. Did we actually just like go over? Wait, which way did we? I'm lost now. How did we end up over here? The map is actually interconnected. I could have sworn we came down here and then somehow ended the back here. Right, we just, we opened this, went over here. I guess we just went straight ahead and then we retraced our way back. Right, we just retraced our way back. That's pretty much it, okay. Feel less freak out by that. Let's go to the shrine and teleport ourselves over. Oh, we're actually next to the village. We don't need to teleport anywhere. The village is right over here. Right, this is where we entered. I want to say the village is that direction. Oh, maybe it's just right here. One of those Grand Excellencies. probably just have to run around this village a little bit until we figure out where he wants us to play the drum again. But remember there are archers up there. up the jump attack and lost a whole bunch of health okay we can't clear the jump I'm gonna just have to retrace our step it's gonna reload let him fire He's, he has more ammo fire again Oh, nope, he's out. And we know there's another archer on the other side.
He hit us with that lightning, huh? There we go. The spirit of the little boy. You're so good. How'd you know I was here? Only my dad and I know this place. Let me tell you a secret. There's a friend who's trying to heal me, who lives down there. It's been a long time since I've been here. Wonder if he healed his own wounds. Come down and play. We will. Look at all these dead bodies and bones. Oh, the roar of the tiger. So the story is true. The dad is uh, luring villagers here. Because, you know, Hu Chang, that's what they do. Lure victims to the tiger. Don't want to heal. Our first heal is a full heal, but I also don't want to go in with half health. Do I? Oh, there's a trigger for it. Just jump. Here we go. He's cursing out his older brother to use the name of Tiger Vanguard to work for that evil sage. So what if we're brothers? One day I'll help avenge our father. That little kid's dad ran away and no one's delivering food. Now you, you're here, you're, you're the food. <laughs> Crazy Tiger. Oh, what is this? He just grabs us? Uh, uh, ow? What? He needed someone to be his chunk, which is the person to lord, and he killed us for it. That was a... That was a quick combo of just him grabbing us for like 70% damage, and then a giant rock in our face, and then we're dead. Let's uh throw some spells into this. We'll first, we'll first freeze them, and then we'll summon. Ow, still hurts. Even without the grab combo, it still hurts so much. Have I lost yet? Ow. Ow, the rocks actually hurt us. Ooh. this mm, I kind of want to die to him just so that I can use 
his brother's move that we learned against him. See if he says anything. So I'm gonna let him whack me to death here. Yeah. I'll let him combo us like this. Kill you first, and then kill that thieving rat. I guess is the king of the kingdom of the sand. It's because you can't really fight bosses again unless we go into new game plus. So I kind of want to try out everything. Also, when we use the Hu Chang, it didn't trigger anything. It's kind of sad. Maybe if we try it again, it'll do it. He's very aggressive, but... Ow, ow, ow. But I think he's pretty fragile. He doesn't say anything. He also doesn't say anything to that. Disappointing. I'm injured. Not dead. We got the parry on this. But he still did a second move and still hit us. Oh no. Ow. Run, run, run. That's a lot of combos. Ooh. We're out of stamina dodging so many consecutive attacks. Okay, now I don't have to try the move so hard. We can just fight him properly. I think we do want to do this. Wow, that was a bad hit for us. We're the one without the glowing sticks. Ow. <laughs> wants to eat monkey brain. <laughs> Which is uh, actual food in China, certain parts of China. Alright, I'm gonna try something different. A lot of delayed attack on his move sets. Yeah, like that. Want to step on our tail and break it? We gotta heal. Uh, I don't know if I can hit him like this, but... Ow! That was bad. We didn't get the freeze effect and still got hit by the move. Gonna light him on fire and also give ourselves a break here. Yeah, his damage is incredible. Might as well use our mana for this or else he's gonna kill us before we... Hmm. 
very aggressive. No wonder why an uh, optional hidden boss, uh, like kind of like the dragon, these hidden bosses are much tougher. I'm gonna use the damage reduction. All right, let's do a small charge. Wait for stamina, because we gotta dodge a lot of stuff. AOE the ground everywhere? I thought getting behind him would help. Ooh, this guy's tough. Got the parry, still traded damage with him. No! Although I think we lived this. Uh, spoke too soon. Spoke too soon. Out of heals. Interrupted by a falling rock? Yeah, I'm ready to die after that. I'm gonna change back to the head, the blue right, for our defense bonus there. Feels like we're gonna need that help. Slight increase to crit damage. Not cutting it. They don't give us the cooldown for it off the switch. Um, worst case scenario is just basically another death, which is not so bad at this point. That one time we sort of had a chance to kill him. Should have just killed him. I'm going to use this first and see if we can light him on fire. There we go. Some nice continuous damage. No, he's gonna throw the ground. There we go, dodge. Ow. Wait, I can't... I can't wiggle my way out of that. I was stuck in his body for a moment there. Uh, he's low. Just gonna block it with the spell. Nope. No. Oh wow, he hit every single hit on that one. The dodge time was just way off. We get big head this time. I think the burn first strategy works and uh, dodge better at the end there. Okay, we get big head. This this is the one. I'm gonna even use some med here. Somewhere. 
Oh, that's not a great start, but it's okay. We don't die from this, but it's gonna be close. Freeze up! Oh, I was trying to hit the freeze spell. Mm. So close. So close. did not go well. He staggered us so many times in the transform state that we didn't really get to burn him either. We got the burn. That hit, that hit, no problem. hits is in that combo. He's about to die. He's about to die. Yet he can combo. Okay, we're just gonna block some of his combo and just try to hit him. Ooh, wow, messy. Just because we can't beat him doesn't mean... Even if we can't beat him, we cannot bow down to him. It's a statement for his brother. What a fight.
There is a shrine right close by. We saw the... Oh, maybe there is not a... Would there be a shrine in the well? New animation. Fancy stuff? A new gourd. Gourd of five ghosts? Reduce the recovery effect by half, but increase the damage for a certain amount of time after a drink. Ooh, it's a pretty gourd though. Look at all the skulls at the bottom. Hmm, reducing heal though. Kind of tough. Uh, the crazy tiger. We roar and performs the AoE damage in the surrounding area. Slight increase to attack, but slight decrease to max health. Mm, it's a roar. I'm not going to do the health trade off. That was just the elite, not a. Not a boss, but we're almost done. We're going to come back and read this next time. Uh, took us quite a while to beat him. And then when we return next time, we're going to do the hidden stage for this. Well, I guess the hidden area in stage two, where we get to fight the dad. Yeah, I don't think there's another shrine or anything else here, because we are in the well, so we're technically in like a special zone, which is why the revive point's like right at the door. The game knows you're going to die. Die quite a bit. Uh, where do we get out? That's a question. Like we saw... Oh, oh, there is a shrine. That's how we get out. Well, perfect place to save. Uh, any new armor after beating him? Nope. And uh, we'll go back out and deal with the hidden area, which means we have to talk to the Zodiac pig and he will unlock the path, uh, the, the, the journey to the past in a sense, Kingdom of Gold, before it descended to become the Kingdom of the Rats and the Kingdom of Sand. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you all then. Bye!